In this video, we show you how to easily upgrade the RAM in the 2018 Mac Mini. Why would you want to go through the trouble? Well, it's as simple as this. You save lots of dough. For instance, to configure 32 gigabytes of RAM on the Mac Mini using Apple's build-to-order tools, it costs $600. You can buy 32 gigabytes of RAM for well less than half that. Now, it does take some work, but if you want to save money, it's definitely worth it. Check out the full video right now. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Before we get started, I want to talk about some of the tools you're going to need. I'm using iFixit's ProTech Toolkit, which includes above and beyond the things you need for the Mac Mini RAM install. But it does have a whole bunch of handy things like an anti-static strap. You have these plastic openers. There's all sorts of other tools in here that will be handy for future things that you may be doing. And of course, there's the driver handle and tons of different drivers to choose from. We're just gonna be using a few different drivers for this particular installation. So the point is you don't need to invest in this full kit. However, I think it's a good investment just overall if you like to tinker with stuff. We'll have links to the full toolkit and the individual drivers that you can use if you don't want to buy the full toolkit. Okay, so make sure you have a soft surface to flip your Mac Mini around like this. Make sure the ports are facing you and you can read the Mac Mini logo. Now you want to just take an opener or a credit card and simply pry open the plastic back cover. That's super easy to remove. The little black antenna should be closest to you. And now it's time to remove the six security screws. We're gonna start with these three first because they are a different length than the other three. So we wanna use a TR6 Torx driver and just remove these three screws. And make sure you place them in an area where you can keep them separate from everything else. So you know which screws go where. That's super important. All right, so we're gonna remove this one and we're gonna remove this third one here. All right, so now we're gonna remove these three screws. So same thing, use your TR6 driver. It will remove those three and make sure you place those separate from where you place the other three because they're different in length. Okay, so now we wanna lift up on the right side of the antenna plate like this because the left side's actually connected to the logic board. So just use some patience and be gentle as you lift up the right side. So you can just slide your finger under there to get some leverage. And as you're lifting, you want to try to slide the left side of the antenna plate down into the crevice of the Mac Mini so that you can put it as close to a 90 degree angle as possible without putting stress on the antenna cable. Now there is a T6 Torx screw that you'll need to remove. You can use that same TR6 Torx driver that we use to remove the antenna plate. So you can just gently unscrew that. And remember, there's still that cable attached via a socket onto the logic board. So don't lift up just yet when you remove that screw. Set that screw aside, make sure you know where it is. All right, so now you just use a spudger to lift up on the antenna cable, remove it from that socket. It will take a little bit of pressure, but you wanna be as gentle as possible when you lift that up. All right, so now it's detached, and this is what it looks like. That is the cable that attaches to the logic board. You can see it's a very, very tiny little cable there. All right, so now the antenna plate is completely removed. You can set that aside. We'll be reinstalling that later. All right, so now you wanna remove the fan. There are two screws attached to the logic board and two screws attached to the exhaust. So you can use that very same TR6 driver. And first we'll remove the two screws from the logic board. All right, that first one, make sure you set it in a place where you can easily find it. And now we're gonna remove the two screws from the exhaust. Now these screws may not pull completely out and that's okay. As long as they detach from the exhaust panel, that's all you need. So you can just leave them actually in there if you want to. And we'll do the second one. Again, our goal here is just to detach it from the exhaust panel so that you can lift up on the fan. All right, so we wanna gently pull up and move it backwards like this so that we can access the fan connector which connects to the logic board. So you don't wanna actually try to remove that yet until you remove that fan connector. And the tool you're gonna to use to remove that are your trusty fingers. So we can just grab onto the cable and gently pull up. Here's a close-up shot of that fan connector. And then you just wanna grab it as close to the connector on the logic board as you can and pull up gently. 
and that should detach it from the logic board. So just pull up, there we go. And the fan is completely detached. So that's what the logic board looks like without the fan connector there. And here's the fan, and there's the connector on the end. All right, the next step is to remove the power supply cable from the logic board. So again, the tool of choice are your fingers. You simply lift up, shimmy it out a little bit, and it will disconnect. All right, so now, one last thing to disconnect, and in my opinion, the most difficult thing, removing the LED indicator cable from the logic board. iFixit recommends taking a pair of tweezers and pulling up on the connector to remove from the socket. I couldn't do that, so I just removed the leads from the connector. Probably not the best way to do this, but it did work for me. I'm not as good as iFixit by any stretch of the imagination, so if you can do it their way, more power to you. Now grab your T10 Torx driver to unscrew the two screws securing the logic board to the case of the Mac Mini. And this will take a little bit of muscle. So we'll unscrew that first one, just like that. And then we'll unscrew the second one. And it's pretty tight screws there, but once you break that initial turn, it's easy to remove. All right, so there we go. Make sure you set those aside where you can find them. Now you wanna turn your Mac Mini around like this so that the ports are facing away from you, like that, because we're gonna push on the exhaust. You wanna avoid pressing on the fins, but push on the two little ears of the exhaust where the screw holes are, and that will pop out the logic board from the Mac Mini enclosure. You can just keep pressing like that and then just pull out the logic board like this. Super simple, super easy, right? Now for a brief sponsor. Incidents are going to happen, but it all comes down to how your company responds. That's where OpsGenie comes in. It gives you the tools that you need in a single package for handling alerts, escalation paths, on-call scheduling, progress notes, and more. And it features deep integration with a lot of other services that businesses rely on. You can quickly see who's on call, notifications, existing incidents, and everything else you'd expect from an end-to-end -end platform in one place. Visit OpsGenie.com, sign up, and get a free company account and add up to five team members. Never miss a critical alert with Atlassian's Ops Genie. Back to our program already in progress. So with the logic board removed completely, that means that we're in the home stretch of this memory install for the Mac Mini. But look at that logic board. Isn't it cute? It's just super small. Everything's just very, very compact. Such a beautiful design. You can see how everything is just built right into this little bitty tiny enclosure and it's super impressive and you have the power supply in there as well. So now we want to access the little RAM cage here and you can use a T5 Torx driver to remove that cage from the RAM. So we're just going to unscrew those four screws and then you simply lift that cage off like that. You may see two little rubber pieces that fit over the RAM. You can just remove those like this. And now you wanna pull the two clips away from the RAM and that will pop it out just like that. There's one module out. And on this base memory configuration, these are two four gigabyte sticks of DDR4 RAM for a total of eight gigabytes of RAM. So we're replacing those two four gigabyte sticks with two 16 gigabyte sticks of crucial DDR4 2666 megahertz memory. Of course, a 260 pin small outline dim module, just like the one we're replacing. So before you insert the module, make sure that little notch is lined up correctly. Just slide the module in. And once it's inserted, you wanna gently push back while you're holding those clips out like that. And then allow the clips to come back into contact with the memory. And then you wanna do the same thing for the other module. You gently push and allow those clips to come back into place just like that. So there we go, folks. We have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM in this Mac Mini, an upgrade that normally costs $600 if you do so at the time you're configuring your Mac Mini with Apple. So you wanna put those little rubber clips back in. They just kind of slide back into place. Just make sure they're in there correctly. And then you can put the cage back on. So that's what we're gonna do now. Just slide that cage back over the RAM. All right, so now we can secure it again with those T5 Torx screws. 
So we'll use our T5 driver to get that done. Secure all four screws. And once you're done, you simply slide the logic board back into place inside the Mac Mini enclosure. Make sure you lift up on the LED indicator cable and the power cable so that you don't pinch those behind the logic board. And just pop it back into place. It'll just pop back in, apply a little pressure, and it'll snap back into place just like that. All right, so now it's time to do everything in reverse. So we're going to secure the logic board to the Mac Mini enclosure. So we use those two T10 torque screws and we use the T10 driver. Make sure it is tight, just don't go nuts. And now you want to reattach the LED indicator light cable. Hopefully you can just snap it back into the socket. But as I told you earlier, in my case, I'm just gonna use the tweezers to put the leads back into the connector like that. All right, so now we wanna reattach the power supply cable. Just shimmy that back in there. All right, so we're looking good there. All right, so the next step is to reattach the fan. You wanna connect the fan connector back to the logic board. Here's where it connects. There's the fan connector. So what we'll do, is so we'll position it like we had it earlier, and then just press down on that fan connector like that to make sure it's secure into place. All right, and then just Turn the fan back over like that to reattach it to the exhaust in the logic board. Just make sure it's all lined up with those screws for the exhaust. And you may want to attach those T6 Torx screws to the exhaust first. Of course, we're using our same TR6 Torx driver and then secure the other two Torx screws to the logic board like this. All right, folks, the fan is secure. We're almost there. Now we need to reattach the antenna. So we grab our antenna plate so you can see the connector here and you also see the mount for the screw as well. So we want to turn our Mac Mini around so that the fan is facing towards the right. So you can identify the mount screw hole and the socket for the antenna. So position the antenna plate like this with the cable down near the logic board and snap the antenna cable on the socket with your finger. It's super easy. And then secure the antenna down using the T6 Torx screw using our TR6 driver. So you can see that the screw is secure and the antenna cable is snapped back into place. You can see it right there. And again, I just snapped that back into the socket with my index finger. All right, so now it's time to re-secure the antenna plate and we'll just turn the Mac Mini back around so that the antenna is closest to me. And then I'll secure the TR6 Torx security screws, the three longer ones first using the TR6 driver. And then I'll secure the three shorter screws with the same driver just like that. So the last step is just to replace the cover. So you wanna make sure that you can read the words Mac Mini, make sure those words are facing up like this, and it just snaps back in place with some light pressure. Okay, so here's the fun part. We're all finished. We're gonna fire up the Mac and see what happens. So it fires up perfectly fine, the LED indicator works. You can see I'm running Final Cut Pro, but let's look at System Profiler and see what the memory situation looks like on this Mac Mini. I'm gonna click on memory. You can see right there, folks, 32 gigabytes of RAM, two 16 gigabyte modules in both of those small outline DIMM slots. Folks, it worked and it worked very well. We were able to do this in about half an hour. I think if I had to do it again, I could probably do it in about 15 to 20 minutes. That's how easy it is. Of course, Apple recommends bringing your Mac Mini into an Apple store if you want to upgrade your RAM. However, as you saw, it's a fairly straightforward upgrade if you want to do it yourself. Thumbs up if you appreciate this video and let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with the 9to5 Mac.